Okay, looks like we're actually live. So, um, my name is Doug. I run a company called Doug Johnson Productions in Orem, Utah. And I've been doing, if you haven't been watching, I've been doing this series talking about this video production trailer that I've been building. I'm actually inside that trailer right now. Um, as you can see, it's not finished. It'll still have plywood walls. Um, things underneath the front desk aren't covered. All, all sorts of little things still need to be done. Um, one of the questions I've gotten uh, over the course of uh, doing this, this series is how I ended up with the design that I did. Uh, there's been um, a few, more than a few questions about that, and I've kind of avoided um, going into any sort of real depth about that, um, just because it's kind of hard to describe in, in comments in a video. So. Um, And see, there we go. Yeah, so we're actually getting some comments. All right, so, um, so yeah, I've, I've, been, I've intentionally put off full answers to that question because I wanted to turn it into kind of a discussion. Um, so uh, as I'm doing this, feel free to ask questions. I am doing this as a live stream, uh, not just so you guys can ask questions, but also so I don't have to take time to edit it later, um, switching back and forth between the, the camera view and the computer view uh, means there would be a lot of cuts in that video. And, I just wanted to uh, make sure that uh, I can do this quickly. So, um, so we're going to go through the evolution. I've got ten different designs. As I was dr uh, drawing the designs in in Visio, I kept the evolution. So as I would revise things, I didn't just overwrite what I had before. I actually kept all of those around. So. Um, like I say, if you feel free to ask questions, I do have uh, the chat room up on the front display in front of me. So if you ask a question, I can usually see it and answer it. So we'll just cut right to the chase here and take a look at this very first design. So this first design, uh, this is what I came up with. Uh, the history of, of the trailer um, basically is that another guy and I were, were producing a rugby tournament. We were shooting a rugby tournament and we were stuck outside. We had switcher, my switcher rack, uh, monitors, computers, everything under a tent outdoors and we couldn't see the monitors to save our lives. Uh, there was just too much ambient light coming from, coming from around us outside the tent. And at that point I decided if I'm going to get serious about doing video production and do it uh, outdoors, then I was going to have to have an indoor space. And so that's kind of where we started. So as we take a look at this first design, this was the first brainstorm of where we started. So um, I'll get to your question in a minute, Satinder. So uh, but uh, for now, let's talk about the actual layout of the trailer. So, so the first design here, you can see there's obviously three, three, only three positions in this trailer. Uh, and this was actually the final size. Uh, I decided if I was going to do this, I was going to go big um, from the start. I wasn't going to mess around with something too small. Uh, but you can see here, only three positions. So you sort of have a director position here, auxiliary position, and then an audio position back here. Uh, back in the back, there, there was a place for equipment. And of course, the, the cable access door uh, there for getting cables in and outside, out and outside the trailer. And the video wall at that point really was just a couple of monitors. Um, there was another set of another large monitor here on the right side that would be basically be used for displaying the program feed. And the reason it was there is like that would be visible to everybody. And nobody would be having to look over anybody's heads. But there are a number of problems with this. Um, first of all, it only houses three people. Um, and if I'm a lot of shows, three people just isn't a big enough staff in order to run the show properly. And so. This, this design didn't last very long. Uh, there are a couple of uh, notable things here. Uh, there was a, a door here to get access to a storage area in back. So that was actually going to be a full-size door and be able to walk into the back and get into things there. But um, once I started thinking about it, it became pretty clear that um, that wasn't going to wasn't going to work. Uh, it was going to need more storage area than that could actually accommodate because basically it really was just an equipment rack and then nothing else, no shelves or anything as part of that design. So that design didn't live very long. All right. 
Okay, so um, that's when we got into the second phase of the design. So um, here it is. So you can start to see a little bit of the evolution of the final design in, in this, but obviously that's not where where I ended up. Um, the re the uh, this design was 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 nice because the the director and the technical director were in back, and that means they were away from the door, and people weren't going to be disturbing them there. Uh, but uh, but in order for this make this design work, the engineer had to also be in the back because the equipment rack was actually going to be in the back. Um, not having the engineer right next to the director and technical director didn't didn't feel right to me. And so, this design also didn't last very long. Um, a couple other notable changes from the from the first design here. If I if I go back up here, so on this design you can see that the cable access door was on the left side of the trailer. Because this this is the front over here, front, back, and the left. The cable access door was on the left, but since here in the U.S. we drive on the right side of the road and we park on the right side of the road, having a cable access door on the left side of the trailer didn't make a lot of sense. And so that was very quickly moved to the right side. All right, so the equipment rack, yeah, was on that side next to the engineer. The other problem with this design uh, is it only had space for six people. And with the trailer this size, it really made a lot of sense to be able to accommodate more than that because um, you know, 16 by 7 by 7 is, is uh, feet. That's a pretty good size, and uh, I didn't want to waste any space. Um, the other very notable problem here is all of the weight for the trailer is concentrated in the back. And that's an absolute no-no when you're talking about trailers. You want more than half of your weight in front. Well, ideally, you have the weight above the center axle, but that was never going to work. And so the be next best thing to do is have the weight more or less evenly distributed between the front and the back, preferably more in the front so that the, the trailer isn't trying to lift up on the tow vehicle. But that was the major problem with this design. All the weight, all the equipment, all the people, everything was in the back, and the front was just audio, which, which doesn't have much weight to it at all. So, um, yeah, so that design was, was, uh, didn't live very long either. Now, next design got to this and you can see basically it's it's very very similar to the previous design but it's more or less flipped end for end with the exception of the engineer the engineer stays in the back because that's where the equipment rack is going to be uh, but then the technical technical director and director move to the front somebody's asking if the stream is live it should be live now YouTube's telling you it's live. You guys, you guys are seeing me, right? Okay. Make sure that it actually is live like it says it is. Yeah, it says we're live. Okay, all right, so anybody just joining and doing kind of a rundown of the designs for the trailer, how I ended up at the final, final design that, that I actually built. So, okay, so yeah, so this design swapped end for end, most, mostly for the most part. Um, also um, added a space for playback and replay, because if I was going to be going to be doing um, any sporting events, I needed to have instant replay, and so I added that position in this design. So here we are up to seven positions, and the final design trailer design had eight. Uh, this solved a number of problems, especially with the weight, um, and also made a first attempt at isolating audio, but. Uh, one problem here is the engineer was on the opposite side from the cable access door, which meant that any cables coming to and from the trailer would have to be strung across the back of the trailer in order to get to, get to the cable, in order to get to the equipment rack. And uh, I didn't, I didn't love that. That was not, not a good design in my mind. So, okay, all right. So moving 
moving along even farther. Um, so we're getting a little closer here. So um, you note here that the engineer is still on engineer and equipment rack are still on the left side. I haven't I haven't made that swap yet, but we move the playback and replay away from the front wall and that opened up a space for uh, another person, a producer or whatever on the, in the front um, or assistant technical director, whatever. Um, and it also got the playback and replay away from the front wall where all that action is going on. Um, but the downside to this one is that, that playback and replay is facing backwards instead of facing forward. And the idea uh, facing forward is that the playback replay would be able, a person would be able to actually see the front monitor wall and they wouldn't need their own dedicated monitors for seeing program preview etc so um, so a, a number of issues with this one um, you notice that all these trailer all these designs up to this point also have the flat front and as I started to look into the possibility of, of purchasing a trailer um, it became qu quickly apparent that if you're towing it with uh, kind of a, a smaller vehicle like I have. You know, I, I have a Honda Ridgeline pickup and it's not not a super powerful vehicle. That the flat nose or front a flat front was not the way to go. You really wanted to have a V nose. And that also having the V nose also gives you extra space that they they don't tack include in the price. So you notice in the next design uh, I incorporated the, the V nose into the design. Um, other than that this was pretty similar to the previous design. Uh, basically just adding the Vinos onto that one. Okay, all right. So at this point I was, as I was getting closer to having a design that I thought was workable, I decided I would just try and try again and see what it, if it would work to put um, the primary staff in the back of the trailer. Because ideally it's not a good idea uh, to have the front door, the door right next to the people that are are going to be most active, and, and need the, uh, to be need to avoid distraction as much as possible, and so I decided, uh, let's give it a shot. We'll give it a try and see if it works. Um, but like I mentioned earlier, this means that the engineer and the directors are um, stuck next to each other, because you know the engineer has to be in the back. That's where the equipment lives, and so. Yeah, again, I didn't love that design. Uh, and also, uh, added a little additional space for audio, so the audio guy has a lot more space here. Um, but again, this is short one uh, one position of what the final what the final design had. So it has uh, can only staff seven instead of eight. So um, take a look in the chat room here. It looks like we got a bunch of people that are joining. Hey everyone. Hey Paul. I'm glad you're joining. Glad you're watching. Um, I am in my trailer right now. Yes. So this is this is the trailer. Uh, front monitor wall there. I am sitting in the position for pan tilt zoom because I had an easy computer, and this computer was um, actually or this camera was actually already set up for something that I shot yesterday, and I just left it there. So. So yes, I am in the trailer right now. Um, okay, all right, so uh, going back to design. We're on design six out of 10. So again, some issues here. So engineer next to director didn't love that. Um, I'm also not a huge fan of the director being kind of blocked off and not being able to, to get uh, to move to and from his seat very easily, so. Again, I didn't keep this design along, around very long. All right, now we're starting to get a little closer to, to where we ended up. Um, so we can see here, engineer in the back, equipment rack on the right side. Now, cable access door is not in there, but obviously that's where that where that lives. Uh, audio booth in the back to try to try to isolate it as much as possible from everything else that's going on. Playback and replay facing the front wall. Technical director and director. Um, sort of isolated away from everybody else uh, but this also opened up a that eighth position so if you know I have a full staff if we're doing a, a gig for uh, or organization that has a producer that wants to uh, wants to be involved there's a place for them to, for them to sit there even if we're doing something that 
where all the other positions are staffed. So get it, definitely getting closer here. Uh, and this is not the final design, but it's definitely getting much closer than, than it was. So hello, hello to Australia. Appreciate you guys, appreciate you watching there. So, okay, all right. So then we get into what is almost the final design. Um, answer Mark's question. I did not mock up the space. Uh, it only lived in this Visio document uh, as I was creating it. So um, I never did any. I know I didn't. I didn't like set up a room, in boxing. I didn't do any 3D prints. I didn't do a 3D model of any sort. It was just basically on paper. Um, so yeah. Okay. All right, so looking at this design, um, incorporates the V-nose, uh, space for technical director and director. I, I lost one of the monitors here because that monitor was going to be in the way of the door. I added the second row of monitors on the front, so there's two big ones and then the three smaller ones, and that, you know, that ended up in the final design as well. Um, as mentioned, engineer in the back next to the equipment rack, equipment rack next to the cable access door. Uh, at this point, audio is actually isolated. There's actually a wall going all the well on um, walls on three sides. Uh, I didn't I didn't uh, enclose them fully, but uh, but yeah yeah you're starting to see what ended up being the final design here. So audio guy is, uh, is isolated. Engineers near the equipment. Uh, CG and titles and PTZ camera. Uh, they can kind of be anywhere. So I stuck them here and they share a common 55 inch monitor. Uh, you don't see it in this design, but the design did incorporate two smaller monitors below, um, and then a perfect playback and replay 128-inch monitor, which is the final design that I'm going to be building now. Uh, I also added, um, somewhere along the line here, I added the 22-inch touchscreen. It actually ended up being a 24 next to the technical director for things like calling up macros, loading graphics into the switcher, um, that kind of thing, or have, just having a second screen for controlling the switcher software, uh, should that be needed, or even audio. You know, could even do audio from there. So. Uh, Hello Sweden. Thanks for saying, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. All right, so we're definitely getting close, and I knew I was getting close at this point. Um, but at the same time, I I didn't want to necessarily commit to this if there was a better design out there, and so I kind of decided decided to just play with a few ideas and see if anything else made any sense. And I played with it, and I played with it, and I played with it. And the only design I came up with that even sort of made sense looked like this. And so you've got basically got the staff on the two walls. Um, yeah, on, on the left wall is where you have the director and technical director. There is a space next to them for a producer or whatever, a uh, space next to that for, for playback and replay. And across the aisle, you'd have CG and titles, a PT and Z camera, and then engineer. Engineer facing this direction, um, so there's space for a keyboard. Uh, and monitor on the side, and then audio in the front. Um, there are, were, I mean, if you look at trailer designs on the internet, um, a lot of them do kind of use this basic idea where you have one wall that has your director staff. And that that's becomes the monitor wall, um, which is fine. Um, but a lot of those are wider. Those trailers are wider, or they have slide outs that um, will move the wall outward when it's parked. Um, but that's not an, that was not an option for for what I was doing. And so the major problem with this design was just the fact that these chairs were back to back. And if somebody scooted their chair back, they'd be running into someone else. And it was just a little bit, the, the, I don't know, I don't know the, the, it was just a little too close quarters, a little too cramped, felt a little too cramped. And then there was so much empty space back here, it just felt like the empty space was uh, not allocated properly and not arranged properly within the trailer. So ultimately, even though this more closely resembled a lot of designs that I've seen on the internet, I did decide that this wasn't really going to work very well. This also ran into the problem of weight distribution as well. As I mentioned earlier, you really want to have about half of your weight in front of the trailer and about half in the back. And that just wasn't going to be possible uh, with this design because I basically put, I'd need to put a ton of stuff up, in, up front near the audio guy in order to balance the weight of the back. So, 
All right, so before we move on, we can take a look and see if there's any other questions. Uh, did you think about using a pocket door for audio? Um, I have thought about it, and you know, Paul, who's been helping with construction, and he's there in the chat room, uh, he's really encouraged me to do that as well. Um, main reason I haven't done that is most of the pocket doors I've seen in my life are broken. And considering the trailer bounces around down, moving down the road, I, I kind of wanted to avoid that. The other problem is structurally, um, the, the wall for the audio booth is right behind me. Structurally, that wall um, is not really built to accommodate the weight or movement of a pocket door. Um, the, this wall can, is not attached to the top. It's only attached to the bottom, which meant that there could be a lot of sway, and I really wanted to avoid having all that weight in there. So, um, so I considered the idea of a pocket door. Uh, ultimately, decided that that wasn't going to be uh, the, the best idea for this trailer. All right. So, where are the refrigerator and snack areas? So, no refrigerator, mostly because of power, but we got snacks. And keep a thing of snacks around. And if we're doing a longer shoot, a longer event, I'll bring a trailer. Or bring, sorry, bring a cooler with drinks. And so I try and accommodate that. I'm trying to accommodate people, make sure that they have what they need. Yep. And then Joshua mentioned that. And Joshua has been one of our camera operators from time to time. All right, uh, Mark Edge. What is the max, max number of people you can have in the trailer on a job so far? Um, I think we've done five. We've had, we've had five people in the trailer at one point. Um, so, and number of gigs, uh, I just I just looked it up today, it's been on over a dozen. We've done over a dozen gigs with it so far. So, and then Satinder so asking what is a pocket door. A pocket door is basically a door that slides in and out of the wall. Um, so, it doesn't take, a, it doesn't swing, so it doesn't take up any space, any floor space that way. So, yeah, and then, yeah, and cat pictures uh, answered that question for me. Okay, so, we are now to... The final design. So ignore the dimensions on here. They, they, those were just approximate. But, uh, but, but that's basically the final design. Uh, I decided against putting. Let me zoom out just a bit here. Decided against putting the monitors against the front wall so that I would have space for cabling and other equipment. Uh, I knew at this point that I was going to be putting batteries and solar panels and that kind of thing in there, and I needed space for that. And it made a lot of sense to put that up front. Batteries are heavy. They can offset a lot of the weight in the back, a lot of stuff in the back. And so I'd ultimately decided that I would use that Vino space in the Vinos uh, for additional equipment and for wiring and whatnot. So all of the power systems uh, ended up ended up there. And uh, I'm, I'm happy with the way that turned out. Um, but this is essentially how the final trailer is turning out. The only portion that I haven't built yet is this playback replay. And the reason I haven't done that is because I've decided that I'm going to make this desk removable. And if it's going to be removable, that means when I remove it, I want to have no sign, or almost no sign at least, that, uh, that it was ever there. Which means installing the carpet for the walls before I install the desk. Otherwise, it'd have a hole in the in the carpet where the desk attaches. And so ultimately I decided that uh, if, if that desk is going to be removable that I can't install that until I've installed the carpet on the walls. So uh, a few other notable things. Like in the last several designs, you can see that I've uh, made space for the Yamaha TF3 mixer that I intend to use. Uh, that is actually is an accurate drawing. I went to Yamaha's site and found the architectural drawing incorporated that here into the into the file to make sure that the that it was going to fit and it was going to fit well it wasn't going to be uh, too uh, too tight and it was going to, it was going to be adequate breathing room and uh, you know room for ventilation and cable cables behind and whatnot so uh, you can see the equipment rack uh, storage that ended up being shelves and I definitely needed all the shelf space I could possibly get uh, there are a few things that, that are not in this drawing but have been intended all along and that's for example above the audio booth there is an equipment rack there um, so 
Okay, uh, yeah, so there actually is an equipment rack above the audio but audio booth, and that was, uh, that was intended from the very beginning, so that wasn't something... I just I, did, I didn't want to cover up the, the mixer and monitors and so forth in, in the drawing with that. Um, the other thing that I have not done yet, uh, I do want to do some overhead storage, and I'm thinking that that will probably live over in this area. It may just go from here out to here so that it's not in the way of the technical director if he stands up, but uh, just a little bit of overhead storage for, for whatever, you know, uh, people's personal belongings or, or equipment or whatever. So, all right, so go back to the chat room here. All right, if you decide you need one, check the ones they use in RVs. A two by two overhead back to the rack wall is probably all you need to stabilize it. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm still open to the idea of putting a, a door in the back. I just uh, haven't addressed that at this point. Um, in theory, I could pull the wall apart and put a pocket door in there, but that would re that would dramatically that could potentially reduce the amount of walking space, the amount of um, how how aisle aisle space yeah that's what I meant um, here between the desk and that wall. So. Why do you want it to look like RO isn't there? I'm not sure what you mean. Can you clarify that one for me, Ted? Any need to mount a camera to view the outside of the trailer while you're working with the door closed to see how's outside your door? Um, that actually, well, bottom line, I do have cameras on the outside. Uh, I haven't talked about those because they're part of the security system. So um, I intentionally do not talk about the security systems in the trailer publicly. But yeah, there are cameras on the outside. All right, uh, how do you run cables for the mixer, Ethernet? So, um, all of the walls inside the trailer um, here have it, have an inch and a half of space behind them. So, the the way it's constructed, the, the out, there's outer wall of the trailer, then several layers of insulation, and then an inner wall that came from the factory. And then on top of that, I added two by two pieces of wood. Hey, Brian, uh, I added two by two pieces of wood and then a piece of plywood on the outside. And that inch and a half of space in there is where I've run all the cables. Not only, not only does that give me enough room for cables, it also gives me enough room to be able to run fish poles through the wall. So if I need to add new cables later, I can do that. So I just shove in, shove the fish poles in from the back. Uh, and then the other, you know, cut a hole on the other end and, and uh, pull the cables through. So all the cables uh, run through that end. Um, in terms of audio, I haven't had to run near as many audio lines as uh, I would have if I'd done a fully analog setup. I've decided that I'm doing sort of a hybrid where um, I tr use a digital mixer inside the, the venue controlled by a control surface inside. So at that point, I really only run, need to run Ethernet uh, for the control surface. And then audio from the venue comes in over a couple of the SDI lines already mixed. And at that point, I just need to... Uh, run it through a final mixer and a, a multi-band compressor uh, inside the trailer and so um, I've only had to run I think it's 12 audio lines between the equipment rack and the audio booth to this point um, no I did more than that because I also I also ran independent cameras I forget the total number but um, so it's 16 for cameras and then another 8 or 10 or so and most of those are running over cat5 cables so I've only got about uh, I don't know, eight, eight audio cables that are run to and from, so, so make sure that uh, so it's, yeah, it ends up working out, so. All right, uh, so Nathan asks, uh, how do you make sure chairs, mice, keyboards, et cetera, don't move around in transit? Um, learn our productions and text if you love your stuff. Thanks, appreciate your guys watching. Always appreciate it. Um, bungee cords for things like chairs and I've got a touchscreen monitor right there. That gets bungee cord in place. Um, so that holds that in place for transit. Um, but honestly, things move around a lot less in the trailer than I ever anticipated. The suspension on the trailer is pretty good. And I've found that I don't have to secure this stuff that's sitting here on the shelves at all. It doesn't move. It doesn't go anywhere. Um, first few shows we did, you know, I boxed everything up and strapped everything down and whatever. And ever since then, well, after the first few shows, I just decided, you know, 
it isn't worth it. These things just don't move. They stay put. So imagine if I was to hit a really big bump or something like that or have to stop abruptly that things would move around, but so far I haven't had to worry about that. Um, although, when I get a little further along in the process, I will be creating little pockets on the walls that I can put the keyboards and the mice in, and then the chairs will, will bungee cord uh, underneath the desks. So I'm going to be using... Uh, office chairs with wheels on them so I basically just slide them up against the desk and then use a bungee cord to secure it to the desk so it doesn't go anywhere um, so alright uh, okay Ted saying replay operator why, why do you want it to look like replay operator isn't there I assume you mean why did I want to have that station be removable and the main reason is the majority of the gigs we do don't require um, replay and so it's nice to have that extra, extra space. Uh, although that, that uh, workspace, that desk, would be very nice for a producer or someone like that. So, all right. All right, so Tinder asking, what's the total cost of the trailer and hardware not including the equipment electronics? So the empty trailer, that was just the trailer, um, insulated, uh, doors where I asked them to be installed, air conditioner, it turned out to be just under $8,000. So, does that answer your question? And then, Joshua, if you did not use your camera converters, what would you be using in their, in their place? Um, so Joshua is referring to the Blackmagic camera converter devices. They're little silver boxes about this big that convert fiber both directions, to and from SDI or HDMI. And the short answer to that is, I don't know, because everything else that does something like that is, it gets, puts you into the $20,000 camera chains, um, or more, and I cannot afford $20,000 per camera, not even close. So, so yeah, it's a, it's a budget choice, and it's really about the only thing on, like it on the market, so. Say Michael saying he uses strip uh, Velcro on, and then yeah that would work well too. Um, I, yeah, using Velcro to secure keyboards and mice would work as well. Uh, Clifford, when is the carpet going up? Um, when I don't have a gig planned in the immediate future, so I have a week to play with it, and the weather's warm enough. But with carpet, it needs to be maintained at a significantly warm temperature at least 24 hours before going up and it needs to stay that way and that would be difficult to do with having to come and go with the door opening and closing. Our weather here is just over freezing and uh, I can get the inside of the trailer warm enough at least temporarily but all right Ted asking do you plan to load cameras and gear cameras six cables etc in the front or back other trailers I've seen this size keep them up front um, most part, I'm sticking cameras and tripods, etc., up front for trans for transit, transit, and then when we get on site, since I can access the rear shelves, uh, anything that doesn't get used, I'll stick on the shelves um, during the event. So, but I try to not load more stuff into the front than we're actually going to be using, uh, and putting that stuff up front help, also helps with weight distribution as well. So, yeah. You guys, have any other questions? Didn't necessarily turn, I mean to turn this into a general purpose Q&A about the trailer, but you guys have. Uh, okay, for audio, why not the Behringer X32 or Midas M32? Um, the, the Behringer X32, uh, by the time you equip it to run a Dante, it's pretty much just as expensive as some of the other solutions out there. And a Yamaha mixer. I, I trust Yamaha mixers more than I do Behringer. I've... I've been using. I've tried to use Behringer mixers a lot over the last 20 years, and end up they end up failing me. So I don't have a, a strong, warm feeling about those. Uh, and Midas M32. I'm actually not familiar with that one, but I since I'm suspecting that's probably going to be the same sort of deal. And once you equip it for, for Dante, it's going to be, outside. Uh, well, it's going to be outside my budget. So. No, Satinder, you're 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 kind. 
I don't know if my friends think I'm cool, but I have to ask Paul if he's still there. Uh, Ted, did you cut your own cables for trailer? Yes, I did. I, I terminate all my own cables. Well, at least what I can. I don't do things like HDMI, uh, or I don't I, I don't ter terminate my own fiber either. But when it comes to Ethernet, uh, coax, I do terminate all of those myself. All, all the audio, all that kind of stuff. So yes, I do. So. Um, since I haven't posted a trailer update video in a few weeks, just kind of let you guys know what I have done. Um, it's pretty minimal, to be honest. Um, most of it's not visible, too. Um, so, the te television in the upper right, this guy up here. I'm um, oh, sorry, you can't even see it. It's actually outside, outside of frames up here. Um, I hooked up a new Roku. And nothing, nothing big there. Um, what else have I done? It's a little, just a little tiny stuff. I uh, finally terminated all of these. Can you see that? Yeah, there you go. Yeah, I terminated all the all the cables for for the, the side of the trailer. So, all right. Um, Ted asking, is it difficult to terminate cables? Not if you have the right tools. If you don't have the right tools, it's next to impossible. So you just have to invest in the right set of tools. So Joshua, super cool. Thanks. Thumbs up. We're going to get you back and have you work again for us, Joshua, when you were fun to work with. Uh, typical level of engagement in terms of price. So, um, kind of all over the map, but you know what? Let's, we'll actually just pull up. So, we'll go to, go to my website here. And then, for example, can, like, go to concerts and then get an estimate. So I've got this rate calculator here on the website, and people can actually see what it costs. Um, we'll, we'll just do a basic business conference, and that pre-populates a few things. So we're saying it's a one-day event, six hours of it being recorded. A director, I'd say, well, I start to, yeah, I got the, the equipment along with an operator, basically that's me. So that's me and, me and the trailer. And then come down here. Two additional camera op two additional cameras with two operators, and then one PTZ camera. No, no designated operator for that, so I can run that both run both of those things. And you come down a little bit further. Uh, we'll say it's streamed over the internet, so I'll set up charge for that, and then a charge for the hard drive, and then uh, an additional staff member, a gopher. Total price twenty twenty one forty for a day. So. Um, all right, so that's, but you know, if you get into something more advanced, say say we're gonna do, let's do an advanced concert. So, two hours, uh, three operators plus one roving camera, plus two PTZs. We'll actually do one operator for that. Uh, two additional static cameras. You guys can play with this on the website. You don't, you don't need me to walk you through this. Um, a little bit of charge for some audio stuff, including one audio guy. Um, blah, blah, blah. Come down. Total fees range from 27 to 20, uh, 2735 to 2780. So, yeah. So, yeah. So that's, you know, for a typical, typical uh, gig, we're between 2000, 2000, 2000 and $3,000 a day. So... All right. Um, yeah. So Michael mentions that. Yeah, you only you, you need to need to know how to solder for for the audio. That and that is true. Uh, I've been soldering since I was a little kid, so that wasn't a problem. Um, sorry. And then Paul wondering what are we going to ask? Oh, it's one of the other guys asked if I'm cool. So since you're since you're a personal friend and you know me, you can answer and say if I'm cool or not. All right. Uh, Ted asking how far I travel for gigs. Um, where I live, Orem, Utah, um, if you heard of Provo, right, we're right next to Provo, and we're about half hour, 30, 30 to 40 miles south of Salt Lake City. And so that's kind of, that's kind of my normal range. So south to Provo, which is just a few, a few miles, and north up into the Salt Lake area. So, you know, north side of Salt Lake, we're looking at about 50 miles. South side of Provo, it's only like five miles. So, so that's kind of the range. I travel farther if need be, but 
we're kind of this area is kind of isolated from much else so the next city of any size uh, is several hours away so uh, yeah uh, Master Chief, are you familiar with the network, New Tech NDI? I am familiar with NDI. I have not used it yet. Um, major problem with that is if you don't have equipment that's already equipped with NDI, it's prohibitively expensive. You're, you're talking, I think the adapters to convert SDI to NDI or vice, or vice versa, they're like six, seven hundred dollars each. You need one on each end. And so, uh, so yeah, NDI. Not right for the way I'm doing things. All right, Bo Smith TV, what's the most complex gig you've ever done with a trailer so far? Um, that's a tough one to say. Um, I've done, I mean, most of the events have been concerts, and those kind of all over the map. Uh, a lot of it determined, is determined by just how many camera operators we're going to go and. Um, yeah, so um, I've done things with as many as, I want to say, eight cameras so far. Uh, staffing, and that, that show, there's only two of us in the trailer. M most of the staff was uh, running cameras. Um, and that was also, we knew that one was going to be edited later, so we didn't have a heavy emphasis on on the production team inside the trailer, but we've had we've had some other concerts where we'd have had a staff of five in the trailer, like PTZ camera operator, uh, director, audio, um, graphics, yeah. So, so, um, how do I market my services? It's been, it's all been word of mouth, 100% been word of mouth. I've tried a number of other things, and nothing else has has proved uh, at all fruitful. So. Yeah, it's basically anybody who knows me. So even though my company now is new, um, I'm not new to the business. So I've been doing some live stuff. I'm doing video production of some sort for over 20 years. And uh, I did take a little bit of a break for my last full-time get full-time job. But uh, yeah, I'm getting back into it. And, uh, so some of the some of the people that I'm working with are people that I've done work for in the past. But everybody that we've worked with has been very favorable. Uh, they've been have been very happy with the work we've done for them. So, getting re getting referrals has not been a been a problem. All right, do you use Strata apps for switching? Uh, I think you're, you mean the iPad apps, right? Um, I have not. Um, I haven't had any luck with them. I've not been able to get them to work with my setup for some reason. But that said, I. I'm a firm believer in physical buttons for controlling stuff, especially for something as high pressure as, as doing a, a live switching. So I definitely am always going to be using physical buttons to, to control the switcher. So, yeah. All right. Uh, if I don't see any other questions come up here in like the next uh, 30 seconds, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. This wasn't really meant to be a general purpose Q&A, but... Uh, so anyway, so now you guys know a little bit more about where the design of the trailer came from. Um, it was an evolution over time. Uh, th those designs, um, I started working on the designs October 2016. And by the time I ordered the trailer, empty trailer in May, the designs were pretty much finalized. So however many months that is, eight months or whatever. So, so, anyway, um, yeah, so uh, I do have a couple other videos coming up. Um, one I'm going to be doing is a follow-up to a previous video I did on SDI to HDMI uh, converters. Uh, there's been some change in that market since I did that last video. I just want to make sure that I get the, get the uh, up updated information out there. Um, and I also plan on doing a tutorial about um, like software that uses the Xbox controller for, for controlling the pan tilt zoom cameras. I've made a ton of changes in that since my last since my last uh, training video that I've done with that. So um, 
If you have any questions, uh, you can go to my website. Uh, the shortcut for doing for getting there, djp.li slash contact. Uh, and that will send me an email. So um, I'm happy to answer questions. Uh, if they're short, I can't do long, drawn-out essays in email or anything like that. But if you have a short question, you need to contact me there. So, All right. Well, I appreciate you guys watching. And... Uh, I will have another video for you before too long, and we'll see you then.